In this video for Computer Science 9618, we take a look at another Paper 4 question, this one focusing on object-oriented programming that includes inheritance and polymorphism. So let's go ahead and take a look at this question. A computer game is written using object-oriented programming. This game has multiple characters. The class character stores data about the game characters. Each character has a name, date of birth, intelligence value, and speed value. So right here we can see the properties of the object or the attributes or the characteristics of the object. We have a character name, it's gonna be a string date of birth as a date, intelligence as a real number, so that's gonna be a decimal for us, speed as an integer. Then we can see the methods. We see that we have a constructor which initializes character name, date of birth, and intelligence and speed to the parameter values. Then we have a set intelligence method, a get intelligence method, a get name that returns the name of the character, return age, which calculates and returns the age of the character as an integer, and then learn, which increases the value of intelligence by 10%. So up here in the first uh, section, we have our attributes or the characteristics of the object. Down here are the methods of the class. So let's take a look at the question. What, the, what do they want us to do first with that information? Write program code to declare the class character and its constructor. Do not declare any other methods. And they're going to give us five points to take this and to put it into code. So let's swing over and do that now. So we're going to create a class, public class, and the class is called character. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and dimensionalize those attributes that they gave us. And we always use private. We never use dim. The first one is going to be character name, and that's going to be a string. The next one is date of birth. So we're going to do date of birth, and that is the data type date. That's what they gave us. The next one is intelligence, and that is going to be a uh, double. And then private speed, that's going to be an integer, and we're using double because it said it was a real uh, number. That is all we need to do for the attributes. The next thing we need to do is we need to create the uh, constructor. So we do sub new, and it does take uh, some parameters. So this sub new is the constructor for the class, and it wants us to go ahead and accept uh, the name, date of birth, intelligence, and speed, and set those. So we're accepting all four of these parameters. So I'm gonna do by val, I'm gonna do C, that's a string, and that's going to be for character name. Then I'm going to do D as date of birth, and that's going to be a date I for intelligence, and that is a um, decimal. Make this a decimal, not a double. I mean, it'll do the same thing, but there we go. Keep it uh, consistent with what we've been doing uh, before, and then S as integer. And all we're going to do inside this sub is simply take these parameters, C, D, I, S, assign it to these values. So my uh, character name is going to be equal to C. My date of birth is going to be equal to D. The intelligence is going to be equal to I. And the last one, speed, is going to be equal to S. And just like that, we're done with part one of the question. We just earned five points. Let's swing back and see what they want us to do next. The get methods, get intelligence, and get name return the attribute values. Write program code for the methods, get intelligence, and get name. So let's go ahead, swing over, and write those two get methods. All right, added public in front of uh, public sub new. Uh, that's our constructor. Remember, your attribute should always be private. Your method methods should always be public. So the first one is going to be our get method. That is get intelligence. Because it is a get method, it needs to return that value. And the return data type is going to be a decimal. I simply return intelligence. And just like that, we're done. Now we do the other one, public function. We're getting the name. And remember, your get methods 99% of the time are not going to have a, a parameter. If it does, it will tell you. I look at name. Character name is a string. So that is going to be my return data type. And I simply do return character name. And we just wrote both of those get methods. Let's take a look at the next part of the question. And looking at the next part, the method set intelligence assigns the value of its parameter to the attribute. Not a problem. It's going to work very similar to how it did in the constructor. The only difference is we're only accepting one parameter. And then part four, the method learn increases the current value of intelligence by 10%. 
write program code for learn. Let's swing over and let's write these two methods. Make sure you're still inside your class when you're writing these methods. The first one is set intelligence. So let's do public sub set intelligence. When you're doing a set method, it does take a parameter. So I'm going to do I as a decimal because intelligence is a decimal. It's not returning anything, which is why it's a sub. And all I'm going to do is intelligence equals I. And just like that, we are done with our set method. The next thing we need to do is write that method that is learn. So I'm going to do public sub learn. Now learn doesn't accept a parameter, but it does increase intelligence. So I'm actually going to write this inside the sub. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to do intelligence equals intelligence times 1.1. Do not do times 0.1. That's going to remove 90% of the intelligence. We want to add 10%, uh, so we multiply it by 1.1. Just like that, we're done with those two methods. Let's keep moving on. The method return age calculates and returns the age of the character in years as an integer. That's a good one. I like that one a lot. Assume that the current year is 2023 and only use a year from the date of birth for the calculation. For example, the method returns 18 if the character was born on any date in 2005. So we're not factoring in the month and the date. We're only factoring in the year. So let's swing over to VB and set that up. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a public function. And we're going to spell it correctly. Maybe. Here we go. Public function. And we're returning the age. No parameter, but it is going to return an integer. Now, to get the uh, year, we they're going to give us a birthday uh, later on. we got to be able to extract that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do temp year as integer, because that's what's going to be uh, returned. Make sure you're still inside your class. Temp year. Here's how you extract the year from a date. You're just simply going to do a date of birth, the name of our uh, date variable, dot year. And that will give you the year. Then we're simply going to return the uh, 2023 minus temp year. Because they said assume the year is 2023. So we will. And we simply return 2023 minus the temp year, which will be the uh, re reference the year from the date of birth that they gave us. Let's take a look at the next part of the question. All right, moving along pretty quick. Hopefully you're feeling uh, confident. If not, give your time to develop and grow. The more you practice, the more consistent you will get. If you have a question, always post a comment below. I'll be looking uh, to answer uh, any questions uh, that you have. So let's get back to the question. Write program code to create a new instance of character. When we have a new instance, that's a fancy way of saying, hey, we're going to create an object. What blueprint are we going to use? What class? That is the blueprint. We are going to use that character class, that character blueprint to create our object with the identifier first character. The name of the character is Royal. Date of birth is the 1st of January, 2019. Intelligence is 70 and speed is 30. So we're going to call that constructor of the character class and we're going to pass those values up and make sure they get assigned to those attributes. So let's swing back over and code that out. All right, we're in sub main. This is where you're going to go ahead and create your instance of your classes, a fancy way of saying, hey, we're creating an object based on our blueprint, which is the class character. So they wanted us to give the identifier. Let's give our object a name. They want it to be called first character as new. Now, when you type in new, you're calling the constructor. The computer needs to know, OK, what constructor public sub new do you want me to call? So we put in character. Now it's going to give us a red line because in our constructor, we have four parameters. We go look right back up here. We can see there are four parameters, C, D, I, and S. So we need to make sure that we put it in that order. The order does matter. So the first one was the character name. They said the character name was Royal. I put a comma. Now the computer knows I'm looking for the next one. The next one is its date of birth. Now the date of birth they gave us was uh, you, when you're doing a date, you do um, a hashtag one slash one slash 2019. We end it with a hashtag. I put a comma. And now 
that red line under the date is gone. The next one it wanted to do was give us the intelligence, which was 70, and its speed, which is 30. Now all those red lines are gone, and just like that, we created an instance of the class. Write program code to call the method learn, so we wrote that earlier, for the character created in part three. I'll put the name, age, and intelligence of the character in an appropriate message. So we don't have a get details method, so we're gonna use all those get methods that we wrote earlier. Then it wants us to test our program, take a screenshot of the output, and paste that into the evidence document. So we're gonna write, we're gonna call learn, we're gonna output all the details, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna run it to make sure it outputs appropriately. So all we need to do is call that learn uh, method. Now, if I type in learn, it's gonna give me a red line. And that's because if I wanna access these methods uh, that are in a different class, I gotta use my object. My object is first character. I can type in dot learn, and now that red line is gone. So I wanna output the name. I wanna output how old the uh, uh, character is and their intelligence. Now, the intelligence, uh, default value was 70. That's what it was when we created it. When we call the learn method, it increases by 1.1. We multiply 70 times 1.1, and that should come out to 77. So when we output these details, it should say the intelligence is 77. So I'm gonna do console.write line. Again, I can't write get name. That doesn't exist. But I do first character dot get name, and that will output the name. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do name. There we go. So that will output the name. The next is the date of birth. So I'll do console.write line. And I'll do date of birth. And then I'm just gonna use get, oh, it's his age. So um, let's see here. Return age, that's what it is, return age because it's his age, not his uh, date of birth. And then console.write line, the intelligence. And that should come out to 77. So, and you want to spell intelligence correctly. And then first character, dot get intelligence. And there it is, right there, get intelligence. Now they want us to run our code, and we should see the name Royal. We should see his age, which is uh, four and then his intelligence, which is 77, and it works perfectly. That is uh, the output. All right, let's swing back to the question and take a look at the next part. The class magic character inherits from the class character. So this is gonna be the inheritance portion of the video, nothing that you cannot handle. The magic character has an element, for example, water. Now, this isn't the only thing they have. Remember, because we are inheriting the character class, they also have character name, they have date of birth, they have intelligence, and they have speed. The only thing that differentiates them from a standard character is they have something that the standard character does not. It has an element attribute. A standard character does not. This magic character does. That's why there's two separate classes. Magic character has an element, for example, water. This element changes how they learn. The magic character's element is stored in the additional attribute element. So we have another constructor here. It says it takes element, character name, date of birth, intelligence, and speed as parameters, call its parent class constructor with the appropriate values, and initializes element to its parameter value. Then learn. Now, we have already inherited the method learn. Because they're putting learn here, they want us to do something different with it. They want us to override that method. So it alters the intelligence of the character depending on the character's element. Write program code to declare the class magic character and its constructor. Do not declare any other method. So right now, let's just do magic character and its constructor, and then we'll talk about how to override this learn method. All right, we're outside our submain. We need to be in between the in-class statement of our character and between submain. So we're gonna do public class, and they call this class magic character. So just like that, it inherits the character class. So now the date of birth, the uh, speed, every all those attributes, the name, date of birth, uh, the uh, speed and intelligence, all of that this user has, or the magic character has, but it also has element. 
So we're gonna add that. Now, we're gonna create our public sub new. This is the constructor, and it's gonna take all those as parameters. So it wanted us to do the element first. So I'm gonna do by val e as string. That's for the element. But I also have the character name. That is a string. I have a by val, uh, not by down, by val d as date. Uh, because I need the uh, birth date. The next one was intelligence, and that is a decimal. And then the last one that I need is speed, and that is a integer. So there we go. E that's everything that we need for the uh, constructor. Now, when you have this uh, constructor, you'll see that it says the first statement of the sub new must call my base dot new. Well, what does that even mean? I'm going to do my base dot new. What, but what does that mean? It means I'm calling my base class. What in the world is my base class? Well, that's simply your super class. What in the world is a super class? So this magic character is what we call a child class. It has a parent class, a super class, or base class, all of those meaning the same thing of character. It is a child of the character class. We have to call my base.new. So my base is calling the super class character. What is it calling? It's calling new, the public sub new. But why is there a red line? I have my base.new just like it asked me to. Because your constructor inside the super class, the parent class, the base class has one two, three, four parameters. Because it has four parameters, I need to pass four parameters to it. Well, what do I need to pass? Well, I can't do anything with C here. If I try to do character name equals C, it's not gonna let me do that. It's gonna say character name is private. It says it's not accessible because it's private. Well, how can I assign the character name? By passing it to the constructor of the super class, it will handle all that for us. So all we gotta do is we don't need to do by val. We pass C, D, I, and S, and that will assign all the values. But don't forget, we also need to assign element. Element equals E, and just like that, we have the base of our child class. I don't want to say base because that sounds like it's related to our base class. We have the structure of our magic character class. We've inherited character, which means we have all the methods. We have all the attributes. We're assigning character name, date of birth, intelligence, and speed from here. And we're assigning the element or the parameter E to element. Let's take a look at the next part of the question. The method learn overrides the parent class method and increases the intelligence depending on the character's element. This is known as polymorphism. It's when you have a sub with the same name, because don't forget, because we've inherited the character class, we already have a method called learn, but we want it to act differently. We don't want to increase the intelligence by uh, 1.1. If the element is fire or water, it increases by 20%. If the element's earth, it increases by 30%. If the element is not fire, water, or earth, if it's anything else, it's gonna increase by 10%. So this learn method acts differently, and that's one of the pillars of object-oriented programming is polymorphism. So what we have to do is go back, make the original learn method in our parent class overridable, and then in this one, will actually override the learn method so we can write new code so that way when the magic character calls learn, it calls the right one, this one, where it checks to see what its element is and increases the intelligence appropriately. All right, so we're gonna go right into our class, public sub learn. Now, that is not polymorphism just yet. What we are gonna do is dynamic polymorphism. So if you're at university and your professor is talking about dynamic polymorphism, what he's talking about, what he or she is talking about is overriding a method. If your professor, if they are talking about um, static polymorphism, that's overloading a method. And I do have a video on, how, on the difference uh, between those. So right now we're doing dynamic polymorphism. So I have public sub learn. I want it to act differently. So I'm going to scroll up to my parent class Here's learn, I'm gonna do public overridable. I'm saying that this learn method 
that's going to get inherited by the magic character class, I'm going to override it. I want it to act a little differently. Here, public sub learn. Well, this is going to be overrides. I'm overriding the parent method learn because I want it to act differently. Now you may be saying, why can't we just have a method called magic learn? Well, on a small scale like this, you can. There's no point in having learn again. You can have magic learn. But what if you have 50 different character types? That means you're going to have to remember 50 different method names every time they learn something or level up. It's much easier to remember one method name, in this case, learn, and use it multiple times, just overriding it, getting it to act differently. Now let's take a look at the code that we can write inside learn, so when the magic character learns, it levels up differently, specifically, its intelligence. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that element, whatever it is, and I'm going to convert it to lowercase, just because that will make it much easier for me uh, to deal with. That way I don't have to account for uppercase letters or anything uh, like that. Maybe Cambridge is looking for that, but um, by having it too lower, the element will always be a lowercase. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to do, I like to use case statements. You can definitely use if statements. Select case element. If it's water or if it's fire, then what we do is we set the intelligence. So I set the intelligence. Now, when I call the set intelligence method, I need to pass a parameter. I need to pass what the intelligence currently is. Well, how do I do that? Well, don't forget, we've inherited that get intelligence method. So now I simply call get intelligence and I multiply that by 1.2 and that will increase the intelligence by 20%. Now, there's another case, earth. If they have earth, I'm gonna set that intelligence again get intelligence and I'm going to multiply that by 1.3 because it'll increase by 30%. Then if it's anything else, then it's going to be set intelligence. I'm going to get their current intelligence, whatever it may be, times 1.1 and that will follow the standard formula inside the parent class of the learn method. But now when I magic character calls this learn method, it's going to look to see, is, are they water or fire? If they are, we're going to get whatever their intelligence is. We're going to multiply it by 1.2, and we're going to use our set intelligence method to set their intelligence. Let's go back and take a look at that set intelligence method. Right here, set intelligence. We pass that new value, maybe 70 times 1.2. We take that, we load it into intelligence, and now the magic character's intelligence has been set. When we do get intelligence, we're returning intelligence. That's their current intelligence. We're not adjusting it. We're simply getting the current value, multiplying it by this uh, value right here and setting that to the new value or their new attribute of intelligence overriding what they previously had. Let's take a look at the next part of the question. Write program code to create a new instance of magic character. Let's break that down again. What do we mean by new instance? We mean we create an object. What blueprint are we using? Magic character. What's our object name? First magic. So with the identifier, first magic. The name of the character is light. Date of birth is uh, the 3rd of March. Hey, guess whose birthday is also the 3rd of March? Uh, not mine. Intelligence is 75, speed is 22, and element is fire. So. All we're going to do is do the same thing, very similar to what we did with the uh, non-magic uh, character, uh, Royal. Let's swing back over and let's do all this right now. Before you create your character, you want to go back, take a look at your constructor, and take a look at the parameters that you have. Because remember, the order of parameters matters. For example, the first thing I have is element. I want to make sure I don't assign the name light where element goes. I want to assign uh, their element which is fire. So let's scroll back down. We put this in sub main. You can do this before or after uh, the output. I'm going to do mine after uh, the output. So I'm going to do dim magic. No, it's first magic. Sorry. Dim first magic as new. And now I need to let it know, hey, am I calling the character class or am I creating the or am I calling the magic character class? Remember, we have red lines. There are five parameters we need to do. The first one is its element, which Cambridge told us was fire. Its name is light. Its date of birth. Now, for its date of birth, 
Remember, you're going to put a hashtag. It's the 3rd of March, 2018. Then a hashtag. Because the dates work differently around the world, like for example, here in the United States, this doesn't read as the 3rd of March. For us, this reads as March 3rd. And I think for them to account for that, that's why they said the uh, month and the date, or the month and the day doesn't matter, only uh, take in uh, the year. So I think that's why, because dates work differently around the world. It said its intelligence was 75 and its speed was 22. So just like that, we have created an instance of the magic character class. Let's take a look at the next part. I want to take a moment to discuss something before we do this last, uh, take a look at the last part of this question. If you are feeling overwhelmed and you feel like object-oriented programming is so hard, well, keep in mind that's a very, very common outlook when students start doing object-oriented programming for the first time. It takes time to develop that skill set. You're doing programming that you've never done before. So make sure you don't get frustrated don't get, don't feel overwhelmed. I mean, it's easier said than done, but understand that you can do this. Just give your time to sharpen those object-oriented programming skills. Give your time to develop. As you do it more and more, it becomes so much, so much easier. So just give yourself some time. Don't feel like you're never gonna be able to because you can do this. You are capable. Just give your time Give yourself time to sharpen those coding skills and to grow and learn object-oriented programming. All right, write program code to call the method learn for the character created in part 3D1. So for the character we just created, they wanna make sure that that intelligence is going to work differently than it does in the parent class. Then it says, I'll put the name, age, intelligence of the character in an appropriate message. So no speed this time, uh, test your program take a screenshot of the output. So let's go ahead and wrap up this question by doing this right here. Okay, so we have our uh, first magic character whose name is a uh, light. Uh, so we're gonna do first magic uh, dot learn. So that's gonna increase uh, light's intelligence from uh, 75 times 1.2, that should come out to 90 if I'm not uh, mistaken. So um, we'll find out in a minute. Console.write line, they want us to output the name. So I'm gonna output the name. And all I'm gonna do is magic character, no, first magic, the object's name. First magic dot get name, and that will return the name. And I wanna put parentheses here. That's common practice to show that it's a method. Uh, it'll still do it in VB, but go ahead and put those parentheses so you can get used to it. They want us to output the age. So we'll output the age as well, just like we did for the first character. So this is uh, first magic dot return age. I wish they would have called it get age. They need to be consistent. Console dot write line. And then the last one they want us to do is the intelligence. So the intelligence should come out to 90. So we're gonna do uh, first magic dot get intelligence. Okay, so we should see, let me put in the blank line here. That way it's just easier to read. So we have Royal, we have Light. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this and let's see the uh, difference in the learn method. So Royal uh, has an age of four, his intelligence is 77. It had a uh, base of 70 when he calls the learn method and increases by 10%, uh, which brings it to 77. Then we have light, who's age five, so we know the return age uh, method is working because we have a different number there. And his intelligence did come out to 90 uh, as expected. Hope you guys found this object-oriented programming uh, video helpful, covering uh, polymorphism and inheritance, a lot of good stuff. But if you found the video helpful, please take a moment and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow. And we'll see you guys in the next programming video.